What are those? Hey man, if you hit 88.8 miles an hour, does that thing help you go back in time? Nah, just kidding. So today I'm going to be covering a full airbag delete. I've already taken out the airbags. If you don't know how to do that, then look on YouTube. I'm sure there's more than enough tutorials on how to actually remove the airbags. It's just four, I wanna say 10 millimeter nuts on the back of the steering wheel. You take those nuts off, you pull those out, you disconnect the blue cable. Blue is the key here. Anything blue is going to be for the airbag system. If you see a blue wire or a blue connector, that's for the airbag so what we're gonna do today is remove these sensors and I'm also gonna show you the airbag control module that on most models I think 94 and older or 94 and up I forget it's under the dash right on top of the steering column itself it may be the opposite of that I may have it backwards I don't know I think 95 and up it's inside the actual dash so you have to pull the dash to get it out but it doesn't matter what you really want to do though is either put some tape over your airbag light or pull the actual cluster don't be a lazy fuck and pull just the light bulb that goes to the airbags if you don't realize which one it is before you get it disconnected you can shine a flashlight on the front and you can see where the airbag light itself is remove the light bulb and that'll stop the blinking but you're still gonna get a beeping sound coming from your airbag module and that's under here so I'm gonna show you that now I don't know how well you can see this based on the GoPro but that light blue box right Right there you want to disconnect both of the electrical connectors that are going to it and that will disable the beeping noise from taking your airbags out once you get the airbags out the light on the dash is going to blink and you're going to get a beeping sound that beeping sound is coming from that box disconnect both of the plugs going to it do not cut the wires apparently there is an injector wire that runs through the harness that goes to that so that in the case of an airbag deployment the injectors are cut for I think 30 seconds or something like that so that you can't have a fire in the case of an accident safety bullshit mumbo jumbo whatever so you don't want to cut those wires you want to disconnect the connectors that go to that box once that's disconnected and your light is pulled out of the dash you won't have anything notifying you that your airbags have been deleted airbag on the passenger side if you have a 94 and newer is really heavy so you definitely want to pull that one completely out as well i'm going to probably have another video to put a piano hinge and a push to unlock latch so that it opens up and you have a storage compartment Department in there so look for that video coming soon but the connectors that go out to those wires I'm dealing with today first order of business is get the hood open then as you can see where this wire comes through here into this little fancy schmancy connector box here we're gonna have to probably remove this somehow and get underneath there then underneath here there's I think two 10 millimeters holding the sensor to the side there was another sensor over here that was connected to this connector i've already removed that one it's again just a 10 millimeter you can see where it was it hangs down here and it's just a sensor so that it feels the impact from the front and then you have another side impact from the front here we're going to remove this splash shield with a phillips head and then i believe it's two 10 millimeters holding that in and then it comes up and over and down into here You'll see there's another orange and blue connector there. And then we can just disconnect it and pull it out. And then we won't have these awesome DeLorean Back to the Future time machine wires everywhere. To start off with, let's investigate this area here and see what it takes to get it off. Oh, just a pull connector. Ah, and I was right. It's the same as the passenger side. There's just this little orange and blue connector down here. And then we can actually pull this wire straight out the back. So what we want to do is get this connector up to us, pull to tab and then get it up to where you can reach it and I believe with these you have to pull the orange one out first and then you can actually disconnect the blue one there we go now we should be able to just yank this blue wire now we need to get down here and remove the actual sensor just to make it easier I'm gonna jack up the front end so I can get to the sensor a lot easier to reach them all right, so that's the guy we're trying to get out. We got a couple of little plastic Phillips head mounts that we need to pull. They unscrew out and then the compression fitting will pop out. And you definitely don't want to press while you're doing these. You have to actually take them out gently so that they'll actually back out. It's kind of a pain in the ass, but once you've done a couple of them successfully, you kind of figure out the type of leverage you need. And then we can use a flathead or a pry device to pop the rest out. 
just like that and then looks like there's one more under here it's a bitch to get to if you have your fender liner and your bumper still stock this would probably be a million times harder and if it doesn't want to move then you can always just try it and there we go oh no we got one more so there's four of those it seems some of them come out a little easier than others there we go plastic protective shield off and now we can get to the actual sensor which can't see oh it's got a plastic cover over it so you pull that off as well and yep looks like a couple of 10 millimeters otherwise they're 12 millimeters and a nice little spider egg yummy all right it's definitely a 10 mil and anybody who works on cars know how hard it is to find a 10 millimeter because they're constantly disappearing Like another one on the front. So now we can pop this out. Bag sensor removed onto the other side. Same thing on this side. Take out the plastic connectors. As I was saying before, some of them are easier than others. Some of them are already missing. Some of them just spin and spin and spin. So we just pry them apart. And then because they're plastic, you can always just punch right through them with a flathead or Cut them into pieces. There we go. Plastic removed. Same thing as the other side. There's a plastic cover over the actual sensor. We need to pry off. Not too hard. And then our 10 millimeter. Don't you hate when it's too loose to take off with the ratchet because it keeps spinning, but it's still too tight to take off with your hands? <sighs> Mechanic problems. Plastic retainer off. Oh, and then up into here to disconnect that guy. There we go. We have multiple wires coming through to there. That's strange. There's another one back here behind this box. So I'm going to pull this out of the way and see what's going on back there. And come over nicely. Oh, come on. There we go. All right. So this guy should just pull right out. There we go. Another sensor removed. Now the real question is, where does the horn connect? Eh, let's figure it out. We'll test the horn. See if we even need to connect any of this stuff. <laughs> nope. Okay. So no matter what anybody's told you, the orange connectors are not necessary. So they do not have to be connected for your horn to work. So if you've done everything correctly, now your light on your dash shouldn't be blinking. You should not have any beeping. And you should have shaved about, I would say, with these guys, especially in the passenger airbag. You're probably saving a good almost 40 or 50 pounds. This passenger airbag has to be 25 pounds on its own. This guy is probably another 10 or 15. These guys are at least two, three pounds each. And then you don't have the fancy wires running everywhere that look like you're about to go back in time if you hit 88.8 .8 miles per hour. So if you like the video, you wanna see more, comment in the section below what you think we should do next. Thumbs up, subscribe. You'll be instantly notified if I post a new video. I plan on getting rid of this and doing more of a short ram with a downward filter somewhere down there, all aluminum tubing. I'm also going to delete the cruise control. I plan on probably once it gets cooler out towards the end of the summer, I'm going to do an AC delete and a power steering depower. Google it. It's not the same as just taking the belt and the hoses off. It's a little more complicated, but Flying Miata has a great write up on it. I'm going to be doing that. Probably also going to get rid of this breather tube so that there's not crap going into the throttle body obviously i'm trying to prep for an ls1 so none of this stuff's important but i do want to have it running as awesome and efficient as possible while i have it again if you think of anything we should do next or you think of anything cool we could do comment below like subscribe share it on social media and check out my free giveaway video we're doing sign up by subscribing and liking the video and sharing it as well and then i'm going to be giving away that package soon thanks again for watching i really appreciate all the positive vibes and comments and keep modding.